So the importance of having a savings. A few couple scenario situations where, boy, having a savings has really bailed man up. See this wooden cupboard here, yeah? That's where my boiler is. My previous boiler had to get changed. So now I've got a brand new boiler. Yeah? To be fair, the previous boiler, it weren't the worst boiler I've experienced. It did break down from time to time, but it's normal with boilers, isn't it? They're like cars, they've got moving parts, you use them all the time, wear and tear, they're gonna break down. It's the inevitable, isn't it? The worst boiler I experienced was at my mother's yard. Before they changed it to a brand new boiler, that boiler was cursed. For 10 years, that boiler worked fine, no problems. After that 10 year mark, every year, every rascal year without fail, that boiler would break down. Always in the winter, you know. Remember, when the boiler break down, no hot water, no heating, you know. We used to walk around, couple jumpers, couple jackets, man, I wearing two socks. Yeah. There was one when it was so fucking cold. I used to have my PC downstairs in the living room. And you know when you got the lights off in the room and you got the PC monitor on in it, yeah, you get this kind of blue light effect. Anyway, man's at the PC desk on the computer. There's no hot water, no heating in the yard. The boiler don't work. I can see my breath. You know your misty breath when it's that cold. It was that cold in the yard. I can see my fucking breath when I'm breathing. Madness. Fuck putting food and milk and that in the fridge. Just leave it on the counters. The house was that cold. Obviously, we had them little fan heaters and that, but if you know anything about them fan heaters, they're mad expensive to run. So, that was the worst boiler that I've ever had. The one at my mother's yard before they, uh, they replaced it. So, anyway, the reason why I had to get my boiler replaced is because um, I remember one time I must have come downstairs and come downstairs in the morning. And it's all this water on the floor, isn't it? I wonder where I where all this water come from, isn't it? Clock now, the boiler started leaking or whatever, innit? Yeah, but it weren't nothing mad. Um, it was just, there was just a little bit of water on the floor or whatever, innit? Yeah. So anyway, I decided to move, because I've got like a, a microwave underneath. Yeah, let me show you. So I've got a microwave underneath now, and that's where it was before, innit? So anyway, I moved the microwave out of the way. And um, I decided to put this basin underneath in it to collect the water in it. So this is just a normal sized basin. You know, people use it to wash up things in their in their sink and that. I don't use it, but anyway, I don't even know why I even have that basin. Anyway, boom. I used to put the basin underneath there in it yeah, for a little while in it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's to collect the water in it. Yeah, so it stopped the water from dripping on the floor in it because if water's dripping, it has to go somewhere, and I don't want it on my rice clock kitchen floor in it. So boom. I put the basin underneath in it and it would take like I don't know three or four days for the basin to fill up and then I'll throw the water in the sink which is next to it, it? Boom. So I decided to call the home emergency and they came around and they assessed the boiler. And you know what these people are like, you know British people, you know that British mentality? Oh the boiler's leaking, oh change the boiler. No 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 no. Fuck that. A man's telling me to change the fucking boiler. Like to say it's gonna cost 200 pounds. Man rejected that straight away. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not changing that boiler. He said, listen, it's it's not economical to replace the boiler. You may as well change the boiler because if you replace that one part in that boiler, then you're gonna to have to change another part and it's gonna keep breaking down or whatever. Really. And my mentality is the opposite to this throwaway society mentality that everyone has. Nah, change the fucking parts in the boiler. And before I continue, let me tell you what the throwaway society mentality is, yeah? If you lot don't understand what man's trying to say. So my kitchen before was an ivory colour. It's like yellow. You see these blinds here? That's what you call ivory, and it's some nasty yellow colour, innit? Uh, they kind of matched. If you can see the tiles are a different colour to my cupboards and that. So the kitchen doors and that, yeah? The kitchen doors and that, they were ivory colour, like a yellowy colour, innit? And I always hated the way the kitchen looked or whatever, innit? So a lot of men will come here and say, oh, yeah, rip out the whole kitchen and start again. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with the carcasses, blood. Now, the carcass is this, yeah, the cupboards, yeah. There's nothing wrong with the carcasses. So all you need to do is change the fucking doors. 
So anyway, I didn't even bother calling Owen in or nothing like that. I said to myself, I'm going to change the kitchen doors myself. Because, again, the British English mentality is remove, rip out, replace. No, 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 no. Imagine if I got this whole kitchen done. Because you have to check it. If you remove the kitchen, then you have to redo the tiles. If you redo the tiles, ah, oh, you might want to put an extra couple sockets there. Then you have to redo the plumbing and that. It's all long. Then you're going to fucking probably damage the floor in the process and have to redo the floor. Fuck all that shit. So you know what I did? I just changed the doors. I think it cost me about £600 to change the doors, isn't it? Um, so that's, that's what man did. Because I don't want to throw away no money. If a man came here to price up this job to remove the whole kitchen and replace it, it would have probably cost me about two or three grand. And I men ended up doing it for £600 out of my pocket in my time. So man's not with this throwaway society in that, man. It's long. So in my head, I'm thinking to myself, nah, this part inside this boiler needs to get changed. I'm not replacing the whole boiler because of 140 part. That's like me, when my car break down, the clutch is gone. I'm not going to go and get a brand new car because my clutch is gone. No, I'm going to replace the fucking clutch on my car. Funny enough, my car's clutch did go one time and I was worried. I was thinking, please make it a simple job and an inexpensive job because I don't want to have to get a new car. And I mean, my mentality is repair, repair, repair. No, the English mentality is rip out, buy a brand new and that. This is why English women got no fucking money because they spend too much, spend unnecessarily, innit? So I think to myself, when I say to the guy, listen, but do your research and find out how much it is for the parts or whatever it is. So boom, the engineer's left. And again, he just wanted to write off the boiler. And, oh, it's no good. Get rid of the boiler or whatever. So boom, in contact with the insurance company. And they're saying, listen, man, you should really get this boiler changed or whatever. And I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I don't want to get this boiler changed. Because I know how much it's going to cost. See, you lot are watching this and thinking, but I just changed the boiler, innit? Do you know how much it costs to change a boiler? Remember, I'm in a building trade, you know. I'm an electrician. Man, know how much it costs to change a boiler. Don't tell a black man it's going to cost him £2,000 to change a rascal boiler, yeah? That's why the man didn't want to change that boiler, innit? So, boom. The insurance company's like, ah, oh, you know, we don't really want to change the boiler or whatever in here because obviously they're responsible for replacing it and that in here. So, um, yeah, they said, okay, they're going to get back to me with a price or whatever in it. They got back to me and they said, listen, it's going to cost £500, but you have to give us some money towards it, innit? I said, yeah, all right, cool, innit? Then there's some other problems or whatever in it. They're just trying to stall, man. They're trying to stall, man. They don't want to fix the boiler, innit? So anyway, I said, all right, fuck it. Left it. Left it for two months. So this boiler, every day is leaking. Now let me give you the progress of this leaking business. Yeah? So remember man said it would take like three or four days to fill up this basin, innit? it? There came a point where this basin was filling up. Yeah? It would take 24 hours to fill up this basin. Next thing you know, that basin would fill up in like three hours. Next thing you know, man's getting a box that's like 20 litres, like a 20 litre plastic box. That was filling up in a day. Next thing you know, man buying a box that's a 45 litre box and that's filling up within 24 hours to the point where I'm like, fuck, man can't even really go to my mum's yard without that 45 litre box filling up. Listen, this 45 litre box, you know, once this thing is full to the brim, man couldn't even lift it. Obviously, I could lift it, but I'm thinking to myself, the weight of this water, it might brought the box, you know. So anyway... This, this leak is getting mad and this is going on for two months and that. So, this is where like you need to deal with stuff ASAP. I know it's easier said than done, but trust me, there comes a time where, boy, one little problem like a leak can cause other things. So, black mold started growing behind my boiler and that, innit? it? And then, um, what I done was I took my torch on my phone and I shined... So like, you got my boiler in it, and then underneath the boiler is my washing machine in it. And I took a light, I took the light on my torch on my phone, and I shined um, where the washing machine is and that, it? yeah. I couldn't believe what I saw next. Not black mould, you know. What black mould turns into. I'm going to show you the pictures in a sec. There was fucking fungus mushrooms growing out of my wall. Mushrooms, you know, growing behind my fucking washing machine. See the pictures there. I 
I'm like, nah, this is becoming a problem now because if these mushrooms are spreading and the mold is spreading and that and it's affecting the walls, it might affect my kitchen like like it might affect man's kitchen to the point where man need to remove the kitchen. Remember man made a little shot earlier, a little scene earlier where I'm talking about man don't want to replace the kitchen and that. You never know, I don't know, I'm thinking worst case scenario, the fungus and the mold might fuck up the walls so much that I need to remove the whole fucking kitchen to go and treat the walls or whatever. And now, man's starting to panic. I'm like, nah, this is, this is getting out of control or whatever. And yeah. The insurance company, they don't want to know nothing about it. They say, get that fucking boiler changed. We're not coming back. They said, they put me onto their manager. We're not coming back to that boiler. You need to get that boiler replaced, innit? We'll give you 250 pound back as a reimbursement, but we're not coming out to fix that boiler. So get that boiler replaced. Send us some information like invoices and that, and we'll give you 250 cash back towards the boiler replacement or whatever. Really. So boom. After a lot of nonsense of engineers coming around and telling me how much it's gonna cost or whatever, really. man found one guy in it, and man had a lot of trouble trying to get this boiler changed because man would come here and it's not even a racist thing. It's not even a racist thing. I think it's because like the way I come across or whatever. Really. I'm not trying to say a man's scared of me or whatever, innit? Yeah, but people don't want to do business with me, innit? And I know it's because of the way man come across and that. It got nothing to do with the colour of my skin, but I feel like they thought to themselves, if this guy fucks us about for money, we don't even want to be knocking on this guy's door because he might be on smoke or whatever, innit? And, you know, if you're doing business with someone, the last thing you want to do is be chasing a man down for money or whatever, innit? So, it's not got nothing to do with colour, because if I was some neaky black guy that... You know what I'm saying? It like just not on nothing or whatever, and it's some fucking nerd. A man wouldn't even care, but I've had man come here and price up a job, and then I go to phone him three, four days later when he said, Yeah, he's gonna, you know, come and do the job. Man, not answering his calls, not answering my texts and that. So I was having a lot of trouble trying to get engineers to come and fucking sort out this boiler in it, yeah. But you know what? A black man saved man, you know. Out of everyone that man called bare white man and that don't want to do business with a man, it was a black man, a fellow Jamaican as well, that come and save man, innit? So boom. In total, it cost me about the boiler itself cost me about a thousand pounds, but one thousand one hundred and to install the boiler cost me six hundred pounds. So call it one seven, innit? Um that's how much man had to pay, like one thousand seven hundred, innit? But you could easily pay about two grand for a boiler. Now imagine, imagine a man didn't have a savings. Imagine I was like these people that live paycheck to paycheck. Where the fuck am I gonna get two grand to pay for a rascal boiler? See, this is the power, this is the importance of having a fucking savings, bro. For, for mishaps like this. Because sometimes the insurance company ain't gonna help you. Yeah, the insurance company ain't gonna bail you out. Now you might have some mad insurance where they cover everything, but you, you, you might overlook certain things sometimes. Certain times you might think to yourself, ah, oh, nah, man, it'll be all right. And that, no, no. And certain times you're gonna need live cash because sometimes the insurance company gonna try it on. Let me tell you about these insurance companies. So, man, I've got the boiler changed. I've got invoices, yeah, for the boiler. I've got invoices for the labor work. So, I've got invoices for the actual boiler itself. I paid a grand, 1,100, yeah, for the boiler. I paid 600 pounds for labor. I've got invoice for the boiler, invoice for the labor. I've got before photos of the old boiler. I've got during photos of the installation where the guys removed the, the old boiler. And I've got after photos of the boiler, the new boiler that's been installed. And the insurance company are fucking man about. You know what they say? Oh, you didn't have a service history on your previous boiler, so we can't uh, pay. I need to phone them up. I need to phone them up. I'm going to blast their RAS club. So, that's what I'm saying. Like, insurance companies, yeah, it's all well and good having insurance and that. But sometimes they'll try to fuck you about They'll try to fuck you about. Um, so yeah, man, that's the importance uh, of having a having a savings. In that scenario there, that situation there, I would have been fucked if I didn't have no money. I would have been fucked. It's all well and good trying to contain a little leak using buckets and basins and that and boxes and that. But sometimes that little leak will turn into something serious. That fungus growing out of your fucking walls. Madness. Anyway, next situation, I'm glad I get to sit down now on it. I was getting tired standing up there, innit? So boom, COVID. 
uh, COVID, man, fucked up the economy a little bit and whatever in it. A lot of people got made redundant, lost their jobs or whatever. In it, yeah. Some people got furloughed and that, but the furlough money was like 80% or whatever in it. And some people, again, they live paycheck to paycheck. They can't take a 20% cut on their wages. They need the full 110% of their wages if you understand what man's trying to say or whatever in it. So, um, yeah, COVID hit and that, and a lot of people were fucked because of it. But me, I weren't. I weren't. COVID didn't touch me, fam. Man prospered and survived through that thing, the pandemic, the first pandemic, the first lockdown and that. Yeah, 2020 didn't affect me one bit. You know why? Because beforehand, a man was grinding hard. You know that infamous Holborn job man always mentioned where I worked there every Ross Clark day for four months straight. The only time I took a break off, which was a mandatory break during the Christmas period. Every Ross Clark day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sometimes 10, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday to Sunday. Yeah, like that. It was like Groundhog Day. Get up in the morning at 6. Yeah, fuck about. Get on the train at 7 p.m., uh, 7 a.m. You see the same people Monday to Friday and that get off the train and yeah, it was coming like Groundhog Day. So man was saving up hard, you know, like imagine I was turning over about 10, just over 10 grand a month. But remember, man's putting in 80 hours a week or whatever in it. Yeah. And you know what? The man them at work, they used to make fun of man, you know, like banter, whatever you want to call it. Ah, oh, Jay lives up in West 803. So basically, there was this uh, a block. So they had like North, East, South, and West blocks. And I was working in this uh, flat complex, I mean, like high, high end flats or whatever. Really. And it was the North block, East block, West block, South block. And it was a show flat on the um, in the West block, level fl level eight, flat number three. And um, that was a show apartment. They used to bring clients over and say, yeah, look. If you buy one of these flats, this is what it's going to look like or whatever, in it. And people used to make jokes, colleagues and that. Ah, oh, Jay, Jay lives up in West 803 and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make all your jokes where you want, fam. But man had the last laugh, you know, because I know a lot of these people, they were crying. They were crying. A lot of men used to say, but what going for you? Like, why do you work here so much? No one man's working. Man's preparing. Don't get too Man don't have a third eye or nothing like that. Man don't have no uh, psychic powers or nothing like that. But man understands that sometimes, yeah, there's going to be things that you're going to be unprepared for in life. Mishaps and that. So you know what? When times are good, that's not when you take it easy, you know. That's when you save, yeah. The calm before the rascal class storm. So there's me beforehand. Because remember, COVID hit, what, January March 2020, four months before that, in that 019, a man's grinding hard, saving hard, so that when something mad, catastrophic, something that no one could predict happened, man's prepared for it. I was so prepared for the lockdown that during lockdown, from imagine man got fired from work at the end of January 2020. You know, I never returned to work until January 2021. I could have got a job in that time. I got texts, numerous texts. Yeah, 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 we need a supervisor. Oh, we need electrical testers. You know that place in East London that they were building up, that emergency hospital? They wanted me to work there. Turned it down. Do you know why? Man earned so much money beforehand, man didn't even need to work. Imagine that during a period of time when people are getting laid off from work and they're actually putting the rates up because people can't work and man are scared of COVID and that. I'm saying no. And you know what? Furthermore to that, I fucking bought a property in that time as well. So imagine I didn't work for a whole year and I put down on a fucking property 26 and a half bags on a flat. That's the power of saving. That's the power of saving. It's not a fucking joke, man. People, they, us Brits, us English, whatever in it you want to call us, we spend, we spend, we spend. We ain't got no fucking savings. You know how much people right now living on a bread line? I beg that transmission on that car don't go out. Yeah, there's certain people, they, their finances are so bad. One wrong move, you know. 
Boy. Because they might use their car to get to work. I beg that transmission on that car don't blow out, you know. Because they're fucked. If they can't get to work, then they can't work. You know, they, they ain't willing to ride bus. Or they might even live in a place where it's just not practical, not feasible to ride ride bus to work and that. So, yeah, man, having a savings is fucking important, man. Too important, man. It's too important. I had a situation before where a family member's account got done up and some fraudsters must have cleaned out their current account. And we'll see. I'm assuming they have no savings at all. So, they probably had a savings account, but there was no money in it. And their current account was the only account that they had money in. And I got done out, cleaned up. And obviously, they need money. Until next paycheck and next paycheck is far away or whatever, innit? So they've been hit man up and yeah. What? I beg you drop man a, a bag, a grand. It's just not happening. It's not happening. I'm not lending no one a thousand pounds. Because this is what's gonna happen, you like someone might be in dire straits and mad situation. And obviously it's my mum. Oh I'm gonna slang that money over to her easy, innit? That's my mother, innit? Family member will phone you up, blood. And they will sell you a dream. They will tell you how soon, how fast they'll pay you back that money. They will, they will even say to you, it's December the 1st today. They'll say to you, listen, bro, I'll get that money back to you by February the 1st. You'll be chasing them down around about June, July. You still ain't been paid by them. Still ain't been paid by them. Family member will phone me up, ask for money. I'm not lending you no money. Because I know I'm going to be stressing, chasing your rascal down for that money. And I ain't doing that. You, you're not inconveniencing me for me to then have to go and chase you. Someone owe me money. I'm expecting money at particular intervals. Yeah? So every week, every month, I'm expecting you to be direct debiting, standing, ordering me a certain amount of money. I'm so not expecting you to just slang me a grand back straight away, obviously. But I'm expecting at certain intervals, bam, 250, 250, or 500, 500, or even 100 pounds, 100 pounds a week, or something like that. If you owe me, listen, fuck Jay Wise now, ain't it? Yeah? If you owe Jelani like money, yeah, look, you better not be fucking going out to the club, going out to restaurants, buying brand new trainers. No, no, no. If you owe me money, that has to stop. I want you eating fucking tins of sardines. Man might laugh, you know. It's not a fucking joke. No takeaways or nothing like that. Because you owe me money. So you have to check it this way, yeah, boom. So you owe me money. You owe me money. But then you're going out to a restaurant and spending £60 and that. Well, hold on a minute. Why did you not just cook a £10 meal and eat that? Yeah, that £50 difference could have gone to me. See, see th th this is what I'm talking about. This is a disrespect now. This is a disrespect now because what happens is a man or a gal will phone you up and say to you, Oh, I need this money, I'm desperate, and that sell you the dream and that. And then when they got that little extra cash and that, they ain't thinking about you. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I don't give a fuck. Someone can phone you up today, tomorrow, and beg you. Once they got that money in their hand, a couple months later, they, 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 they ain't quick to pay you back. I know people. I ain't going to say their name, but you know who you are. I know people. They borrow money from people when they're in dire straits. I don't know how much. A grand, 500, three grand or whatever. They owe people serious money. And they've said to me, I owe that person money, innit? But, this, this, yeah. but, but, but when, they, when they summoned that person, when they begged that person for that money, they told them, I will pay you back ASAP. I'll pay you back on this day or whatever, innit? That's their mentality. You're not doing that to me. You're not doing that to me. That's fucking beef, blood. No one... I'm, I'm never owed anyone money. And anyone owe me money, I'm coming for you. There was one... I made a video about this before, and I had a man try to fuck, fuck me with me. Uh, over 300 pounds and that. Man was harassing this guy, you know. I was trying to remember where he fucking lived because I was a biker, uh, a biker guy that man... Used to go out on ride outs or whatever, innit? And he, I've been to his yard or whatever, innit? Yeah. But I didn't obviously. If you're with a man riding bikes and you go and stop off at his yard or whatever in an unknown area, you're not going to really pre the address or nothing like that, innit? But 
I'm trying to track down this guy. I know, okay, boom. My man lives in Norfolk and that, and he lives next one, one, one news agent, whatever. I'm on Google Maps because he lives opposite the new news agent. I'm trying to track down this news agent so I can go and turn up to his door because the man is not answering my calls and that. he's fucking me about. And the man play about my money. I'm all phoning him at two in the morning. You know why I phone him at two in the morning? Because I can't sleep knowing that you owe me three hundred pounds. So you know what? I'm gonna interrupt your sleep. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that. Man, take money seriously. Where I'm from, how I grew up, money is serious. Man will kill you over two, three hundred pounds. That's a disrespect. That's a violation. I know a man. Said this bare times. I know a man. A man got a girl pregnant, a little slag thing, whatever in it. And one of the man them said, I will beat up that girl and get rid of that baby by beating her up over 50 pounds. This is the environment man grow up in. Money is taken seriously. A man will fucking take a baby, unborn baby's life for 50 pounds, bro. Had a family member phone man up. Oh, can 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 you borrow me 500 pounds so I can buy a fridge in there? No, I ain't got 500 pounds to lend you. This is when I was an apprentice, you know, it's like over 10 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever, really. No, 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 I ain't got 500 pounds to lend you to go and buy no fridge. You know what? I ain't even spoke to that. I ain't spoke to that cousin since. So you don't know I wasn't going to get that money back. You don't know. This, this, this family member buns weed. This family member buns weed. So that's another thing as well. You owe me money. Um, you better cut out that weed, you know. You better go cold turkey with that weed. So, I mean, you owe me £500, but every three days you're spending £40 on a draw. Nah, fuck off, man. This is what people do when they owe you money. Don't lend nobody no money. You know what? If they don't want to talk to you, don't want to be your friend, fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Because you're going to be chasing around and they're disrespecting you by not paying you. So, yeah, man. If you have a savings, you, you don't, I mean, obviously you could run into a situation, but you know, like, why have you not got a separate savings account and that? So that if people do do fraud on your account or whatever, I might not know the technicalities of bank accounts and that, but I'm sure if your current account was separate to your savings account where you don't have a debit card for that savings account, your account can't get hacked as easy or whatever, but anyway, I know if people were to try and borrow money off of me, I, I'm not giving no one no money because I know it's going to turn into a drama. You know? Next situation. And as you can see, a man's changed location. Isn't it? I'm literally just on the other side of my table. Isn't it? Situation I'm in right now. So, as you don't know already, man's up in Northampton doing electrical testing on people's yards. I go into people's houses, test their sockets, test their lights, test their fuse box. When times were normal, times were good, times were normal, man be earning fifteen hundred pound a week, so that's a six grand a month. Nothing, no sweat to earn that kind of money. Ain't it? But as we're getting closer to December, oh, this contract's running out as well, and it's gonna expire soon. Um, man's not earning no fifteen hundred pound a week, every week. There's some weeks that are slow, real slow, like eight hundred pound a week slow. Some of you might be thinking, right, if I was earning £800 a week, what's that, 1632 If I was earning £3,200 a month, I'll be laughing. Yeah, but that's your standards and that. Man's used to earning six grand a month. So for me, I'm taking a pay cut or whatever. Innit? Yeah, I've got more free time on my hands because I'm doing less jobs, but man still want to earn money, innit? So, but imagine I was in a situation where my outgoings was usually around four and a half, five grand a month. And I'm used to earning six grand. Every every fucking month, man would be going bust. Man would be losing out. And, but I've got a savings plus having like my, my outgoings are fucking low. Put it this way. To cover all of my outgoings, I just need to work for a week and a half, two weeks maximum. And all of my outgoings are covered in that. Man have real low outgoings. Man don't have no mad debts or this car and some mad car finance, 600 pounds for a car finance. I don't have that nonsense in that. So my outgoings are low. My outgoings are like 1,500 pounds a month, I think, every year. So it's mad low. Imagine my outgoings was mad high. Imagine there was like four, four and a half grand. And then my wages got cut down to about three and a half grand. Because one thing you need to realize is around December in the construction industry, it's kind of a bit difficult to find a job. Because that's just where it's going, and it? it's at the end of the year, and that things kind of slow down. So, 
someone might be in a situation where boy it's better to have a job paying less than have no job so some people have to stick with a job where the income they're generating is lower than their fucking outgoings see when you're like me although i'm not in a position where my income is less than my outgoings i've still got savings so even if i was in a position where boy for a week or a month or two month and a half or whatever my income will be lower than my outgoings. I've got savings to fall back on. Imagine I weren't in that position. I'd be fucked. I'd be fucked. That's the power of savings. So now, but man's calm. Man's calm. Again, my, my outgoings are really, really low. Although I've taken a pay cut because the jobs are slow and that, my income is still way higher than my outgoings. But man's calm. Man will still be calm, even if... My outgoings were more than my income. Do you know why? Because I've got savings. When you got, I ain't going to say how much I've got in savings, but when you got a lot of savings and that, you don't mind having to dip into your money at two, three hundred pounds every month or whatever. It don't make no difference. But if you ain't got no savings, you're stressed. Again, a big man's fucking transmission don't go out on that car. There's some people right now living on that bread line, blood. Boy, they can't afford for nothing to go wrong. Uh, how how you people who live like that, how do you even sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? And I know some smart ass in the comment section gonna say, well boy, I just go to sleep. I close my eyes. No, 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 no. Don't don't fuck up. Don't fuck up. How do you people sleep at night knowing that boy? Man's got 50 pounds to my name until next paycheck and Boy, it's not, nothing better go wrong, you know. I can't live like that. I'd be stressed. I'd be stressed. Me, I live stress-free. Like, right now, like, I was even saying something the other day, like, I'm just fucking happy, you know. Like, this is the power of making sacrifice for a long time. You, you find yourself in a place of comfort. Me, I'm just too comfortable. I ain't got no worries. No worries. That's the power of making sacrifice. That's the power of saving. You put yourself in a position where, boy, you know what? If things go wrong, don't even really matter. I could get fired today and be off work for four or five months. I will still be okay. That's because man saved. But if you don't save and you live every day as it comes and you want to go on holiday every two months because you feel entitled, don't get me started on this English mentality, this British mentality where we feel like we're entitled to a Ross Clark holiday every year, three times, four times a year because we do it like an idiot, 40 hours a week. No, you do a 40 hour, um, a 40 hour week uh, job throughout the year, you don't deserve no fucking holiday two, three times a year. Me ain't been on holiday since 2016 now that's just me but i don't feel like i'm entitled to no fucking holiday why why yeah man you're entitled to a holiday when you've been doing overtime so most people do a 40 hour week yeah yeah, yeah that's cool that's cool that's cool isn't it? yeah in my books the book of jay wise conquering adversity you don't deserve a holiday until you're doing 60 hours a week yeah work the fucking weekend it's a privilege to be able to work on the weekend and earn extra money and but no, I don't want to work on the weekend. It's some people's mentality. I want to have fun. Well, your fun is the reason why you have no Ross Clark savings and you're living on the breadline. Stay away. Done, no.